October. So you have an assignment due on Thursday. Is that correct? All right. Don't wait until Wednesday night to do it. Even though this one should be a lot shorter than the first one. Okay. This one, I think you can do it probably in a couple of hours. It's not going to be like eight hours like the first one. Okay. All right. So, Johnny, so, so far we have done the many stresses. What are the other stresses you have? What about shear stresses? So if you remember, what just happened? Okay, so if you remember, uh, basically you have, you know, we have two types of stresses. We say we can have actual stresses. which basically is that if you have a cross-section, the stresses would be what direction? Would be on the direction of the, would be normal to the cross-section, no? We say actual stresses or normal. And what type of deformation was inducing this, this type of stresses? Actual stresses. So you had actual forces, and what else can you use this? You just did two assignments about it. Yes. As long as the page you see in front, so let me know. Is that okay? Yes. Thanks. All right, bending moments. And let me know if the image is still good or bad, if I need to call again IT or not. Okay, so bending moment. So that's not what we are doing. So we have done that before. What would be the other type of stresses you have? We can have what is known as the shear stresses. And this one, this one would be what? It would be tangential to the cross section. Okay, so this is, it will be. Then it will use the letter tau for the shear stress. And this will be induced by what? By shear forces that so far we have seen, we call them V, no? All right? So that's the one we are doing. So basically, we you have started to find the shear and bending moments. Once you have the bending moments, we're able to calculate what? The direct stresses due to bending moment or the actual stresses due to bending moment, no? Okay, but we have been doing nothing with the shear forces. So what can we do with the shear forces? We can calculate the shear stresses. All right, so let's over here. So let's put right here. Okay, so. Okay, so some comments about shear stresses. Uh, I'm not going to do the derivation, but let's say it can be shown. That the shear stress in a long and lens slender beam. is given by tau equal to VQ over IT. I don't think the days are not going to be long enough. You said need to sit. It's easier. I was just saying. Uh, no, because then I need to put this the paper over there. I, mean, I don't. Know. Let's let's keep going this way. Okay, it's working. All right. So this. So here we know where. What would be V? V. We know what it is. 
is the shear force. What is I? Okay, so I'm going to call it here in second area moment of inertia. There is a reason why I call it second instead of area moment of inertia. Because what is Q? First, correct, first area moment of inertia and T is just the thickness. So that expression over here that we wrote should not be new to you. You should have seen that one in solid mechanics, no? Is that yes or yeah, no? Okay, that's why I'm not doing the derivation, basically, because you have seen it before. Okay, so here, Johnny, you don't have any problem with B. Now you know how to calculate it with the moment of inertia of T, but Johnny, you have a little problem with Q. Okay, so before going to Q, let me just do here a note. Okay, so let's say you have a beam projected to any type of loading. Okay, I'm making it up. The matter can be anything you want, okay? And this is actually also true for bending, but people do it more for the shear. Okay, so you could find the, if you use this expression over here, all right, let's say this is a cross section of the beam, all right? You will find out that the shear distribution, maybe you might remember or understand, but what is shear? What do you need in order to have shear? What is shear? If you need to show shear with your hands, what will you do? Okay. You need to have one surface friction with the other one, no? Yeah, this is shear. So basically you need to have a surface to rub against the other one. So if you think about it, what should be the shear at the top of the surface? Zero, perfect. What should be the shear at the bottom of the surface? Zero. And this is because the force is going up and down, okay? I'm just doing this direction. Where should it be maximum? In the middle, all right? So we know this should be the middle, should be the maximum. Okay, and probably you remember this, but you probably did the derivation. You can show that the distribution is like elliptical. So this is the real shear distribution if you use that equation. But sometimes in engineering, they don't like to do complicated calculations. So what do they do? They do, okay, I'm gonna do V divided by A. Or for example, you can do here, A and V, no? Yeah. So in this case, if you do this, how would be the distribution? What would be the shape of the distribution if you use this equation here? It would just be a constant because this would be an average. Yeah? Okay, so what is the problem is that, let's say so, we can say that both these surfaces will be equal because they will represent the same, the same uh, shear force. The same, they will find the shear stress using the same force V. However, what can you say between this one, between the maximum and the average? So the max is higher than the average. All right. So if you want to do a detailed analysis, let's say if shear is not critical for that structure, you can use this one. No, it's not a big deal. But if it's critical, you better do the most uh, detailed analysis. Okay. In the case of a beam, 
okay? In the present case, and I'm not gonna do the division, because it's not important, the important is that you know, actually, the maximum stress is 1.5 times the average stress. So meaning that if you were doing your design using the average stress instead of the real distribution for the shear stress, what would be the error percentage that you would be doing on the evaluation of the shear stress? 50%, that's a lot, no? So you need to be careful. Sometimes can be done, sometimes cannot be done. All right, so this is important. And the same thing happens really with the uh, bending, okay? All right. So let us talk a little bit about the first area moment of inertia. Okay, so real definition of Q is actually integral of Y dA. Okay, so let's see how this is calculated. Let's say you have a rectangular cross section. This is the one we start with because it's the easiest one. So this is your cross section. Okay, so far, every time we have been taking measurements, we, what was the reference line? What is this line? This is the neutral axis, no? So NA equal neutral axis. Okay, so let's see if I have another color. Okay, so what is the meaning of this? So this, let's say, is some area. A. And all the time from here, what do we take? We take the measurements of Y. Do I take it from the centroid of A or do I take all the way to the end of A? To the centroid of the area. I was gonna do next, but good question, okay? Sorry. No, 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 it's good, it's good. I'd rather have that, you know? You move ahead, perfect. So basically by definition, Q is equal to the integral of Y dA. So this would be equal to what? Would be equal to uh, area times distance from neutral axis to center of gravity of area. Basically is what you were saying. So we can say basically that Q equal Y dA, we also be equal to what? We be equal to A times Y bar Where again, if you want, just go here, y is distance from neutral axis to center of gravity of area.
Right, uh, right left. Uh, move this way. Yeah. Okay. So here, let's see if this is if this looks valid here. So for example, if we have here again our cross section. So we know the shear stress on top here, this should be equal to zero, but we know the equation is tau equals to dq over it. So can v be equal to zero? V will be a constant, no? I will be really a constant as well, and t will be a constant. So you, let's put here some values. More this will be t if you think about it, okay? I knew that was gonna happen. Again, again, prepare the other. So we know this is to this, this, the shear is zero at the top. Why is it zero? Mathematically, now I'm speaking. All right, because Q is zero, no? At the top, correct? All right, so here will be Q equals zero, perfect, because. A is equal to zero. Yeah. Okay. And at the bottom, basically, you will have the same thing, no? Yes. Okay. So now you know how this equation is able to give the expression that we give before. I'm going to plot it, but that doesn't mean that I want to derive it. That is zero at the top and the bottom is because the Q is zero. All right, so let's do one example. I mean, the typical example we're going to do now. Okay, so for the example, we're going to use a T flange. We could do the I beam, but let's just use the T flange since I have the data. Okay, so let's say we have this uh, T flange over here, this T cross section. Let's use the same stuff that we had before. See, maybe I can do it num uh, symbolically. So this will be 12 inches. This should be here. T flange is three inches. Well, actually, it should be symmetric, okay? I'm the one who did a very bad job. That distance. So let's see, uh, that distance, for, so this will be T web, let's say. T web will be four inches. So this is not to scale at all. Mm -hmm. And this distance over here, Same, this should be four inches, four inches. And, okay, and that distance over here, let's call maybe this one. Okay, 
H web is six inches. Okay, so this flange is subjected to a shear force B. equal to 12 kip. Okay, so the question here is to determine the shear in the section. Okay, so you can imagine probably the first exam prime will be what? We'll have a beam with some type of loading, will not be that complicated. You need to do the shear bending moment diagrams, no? Yes, ask you to find the max, the location of the maximum bending. You calculate the maximum bending, know if it's tension or compression, no? You need to know if the top or the bottom is in tension or compression. Next thing I can ask you is determine the shear distribution in the cross section where the shear force is maximum. Yeah, that's probably what would be the first example. Okay, so now you do this part over here, you take the cross section. So we need to calculate over here. First thing we need to do is, since I like to do steps, first let's talk about Cross section property. So let's recall over here. What is the equation we need to use? DQ over IT, no? So what is the first thing we need to find? We need to find what is I and T. If you want, I is based on the cross section, no? Yeah. So in order to find the I, what is the first thing we need to do? What is that reference line we have been doing all the time? Neutral axis, we need to find the location of the neutral axis, no? Neutral axis will be going, because this is symmetric, we only need to find the location on the y direction, which will be going through the centroid, all right? So first thing we need to do is, uh, so due to symmetry, only the, Y component of the CG is required. So basically the equation we're gonna be using, we use it already before, is Y bar, the total area will be equal to the summation of the individuals. CGs, Johnny, I do it this way, S sub I. So in here, I'm gonna do a little sketch. First, I extremely important with me. Okay, so let's say this will be area one. This would be area two. Okay, so next thing you need to do is what? You need to select a reference point or reference frame from which you're gonna calculate the Distance y. Okay, so you can choose the bottom, you can choose the top, but since I have the results for this one, I'm going to start, let's say, y from the top. Okay, if you have any questions, stop me over here. All right, so if we use that equation here, so this, if we use the above equation, we have y, location of the CG should be equal to the summation 
of the location of the CG of each one of the areas divided by the total area. So if we start from the top, what would be the distance to this one over here? What is Y sub one? Let's put values because it might be easier than put. What should be the distance from here to the CG of one? So it should be TF, uh, sorry, TF divided by two, no? Which is what? Let's put values, might be easier. You want me to put values or you want me to put T, T more? That's too late. But. <laughs> you rather have values or just symbolic? Symbolic? All right, so, let's, so let me just restart here. This would be T flange divided by two, no? So three divided by two times, what would be the value of the area? TF times T sub F, perfect. So we did for A sub one. Now we need to do the same thing for the certain area. So what would that be? That's H W divided by two, correct. Again, if you don't see that, let me know. And now what should be the area? No, because we're finding, we're finding, no, we're not finding A2 now. We're finding the distance from here to here, Y2. We're not doing the area, first. we're first doing the distance. Now the area, yes, would be TW, since you mentioned, would be TW times what? HW. Is that clear for everybody or not? All right, so, and you divide this by the total area, that, be, that would be what? T sub F times T sub F plus TW plus HW. And if I didn't do any mistake, this gives you Y is located at 3.3 .3 inches from the top. Okay, so now we can calculate the second area moment of inertia. So let me just redo another figure again. I do a lot of figures, okay? So the thing, I see a figure, I understand everything in one second. So this is our cross section. Now I know I do it randomly. It doesn't matter the location. Okay, I do it anywhere. Obviously, nothing is to scale. This is the natural <laughs> axis. And from the natural axis, what do we know? We know that distance over here is three point three. We know this is. So this what T flange T flange the web. If we need something else, I'm going to put it. Okay, and let's say this cross section here, just to be detailed, let's say this is uh, X matter and this is Y, okay? So we're gonna be looking at the shear about which axis? The IXX or IYY? Remember the bending, we also. I, X, X, so we'll be looking about 
I X X. About the neutral axis, no? Yeah, so if you want, I'm gonna put this just for clarification at neutral axis. So let's see, what would be the IXX of A1? One over 12, yes. Perfect, the FQ. But this is will be about the CG of this location, no? Yeah, so what do we do? What is the tool that we use to move it from here to the natural axis? We use the apart axis term, which is I prime if you want equal to I plus A D squared, no? So we do here plus, what is the area? That's easy, would be what? Correct DF times DF. And now, what should be that distance over there? So if we put the symbolic, we have then the Y bar, no? Correct? Minus TF over two. And everything squared, probably. So all this, over here, is related to A1, no? Okay, now we need to do something similar with what? A2, so what, what would that be then now? This will be 112, correct? So the base will be EW and all this stuff is HW, I forgot before. So times HW what? To the cube. But again, this is about the CG of A2, no? So we need to use the parallax theorem. What will be the area? W times DW times what? HW plus DW minus one over I mean minus HW plus TM minus one over So it would be HW plus TW. Uh, no, it would be HW divided by two, no? No? It will be, if we start from here, the distance from here to here, basically is all that distance here, correct? All that distance is what? It's HW divided by two plus T sub F. So it's HW divided by two plus T sub F minus Y bar. And this should be squared. And this is taking care of the term of the term of the yeah, the term referring to the area A2. So if you do this calculation, it gives you that IXX is equal to 390.6. To the point. It doesn't matter. The only reason I think I started that because I think didn't last time we do one problem that wasn't symmetric. So you had the I, X, X, I, Y, Y, and I, X, Y. Yes. It's more because of that. But if you put I, X, it's not going to be a mistake, okay? Don't worry about that. All right, so now that we know this, in this equation, we know V, we know I, we know T. So, so far, what do we know? So let's see, so far,
it is known that what what do we have b would be equal to 12 kips i is equal to 390.6 inch to the fourth And what would be T? T would be either equal to what? BF or TW, no? Yeah, depending on which section we are, no? Okay, so what do we need to calculate now? We need to find the Qs. Okay, all right, so we need Q over here would be the question mark. For the equation tau equal the q over it. All right, so let's start just by looking at A1. You know, let me put the neutral axis over here. It doesn't matter where I put it. I mean, they put it here. All right. Okay, so maybe I don't need to do it too much detail, but what would be the she over here at the top? Q is zero because Q is zero, no? Now we need to find what would be the shear here, let's say at point here, let's say tau sub A. All right, so let's say this would be distance that would be. So let's say over here, let's write, maybe we're gonna have space. It's, yeah, probably well. Tau sub A would be equal to what? V is constant, Q upon A divided by I, I, yeah, I, T. Let me break this in two parts. Maybe I might end up with space. So what would be K sub A? We know this will be area times some Y bar, no? Okay, so what would be the area? Maybe let me put this again. This would be what? BF. Is this T flange? So what is the area? Will be BF times T flange. What will be the distance to the CG? So this is the what we call here what Y bar, no? But it's a different Y bar, no? This is the 3.3. So be careful, this Y bar. I mean, yeah, it's I mean, not exactly the same. So let's put it here a jiggly here instead. Let's make it different because not exactly the same. No, Y was all the way to the top, no? Yeah. So you see, that's not Y bar. So we could have used Y bar. So this is 3.3 here. So what will be then the Y jiggly? It will be Y bar. Minus the thickness of the flange divided by two. So Q sub A, I don't have this calculation. Can somebody do it, please? So it would be what? BF, I think, was 12 times three times 3.3 .3 minus 
3 divided by 2. What do you do that calculation, please? Okay, thank you so much. 64.8, and this, what should be the units of this? Interest to the third perfect. So this is our middle step. So that now we can say what? That tau sub A will be equal to V, Q sub A divided by I. In this problem, what would be T? What would be T? Would be B sub X, so I, B sub X. So if we put values, What? So I think was V was twelve, no? Twelve times sixty four point eight. Oh, uh, yeah. So let's put it. Sorry, it so would be ten to the three. Divided by I, which is three ninety. One six divided by the F was twelve, no? So if you do this, what do you get? One sixty five point eight nine. And this will be, I mean, if we look at the units, will be LB in square, which is the same as yes, I know. So I don't care which one you use, you can use both of them, but generally stresses are given in PSI. But it's the same thing. All right, maybe, maybe let me do it here. I didn't do a division, but what should be the distribution? It should be something like this, no? Yeah. Maybe, let me, let me just plot it over here so it's clear. We go from tau equal to zero. Tau sub A over here. This is for the area A1. Okay. Okay, now what's gonna happen also at point A. Okay, let's just see what happened here. Okay. So now let's say for section A2, we still do here A1, I leave A1. Okay, but now what do we do? We go here to, maybe I did it too long, but that's fine. To A sub two. Uh, 
about the neutral axis. So what's gonna happen here at point A? If we move now to this, this one over here. So at this point here, what's happening here? T will be equal to what? T what, no? Yeah, so let's say here at uh, intersection or boundary of A1, and a two, there is a discontinuity because T now will be equal to T one. So we can write what? Tau sub A prime if you want, will be equal to what? B, Q sub A, I of what? B web instead of B flanks, no? So this will give us what? The 12, let's not forget this time, 12 to the three, time 64.8 divided by 319.6. This times the web is, I think it was three, no? Is that correct? No, four. So what does that give you over here? Okay, 497.69. I don't have the value, so I have to trust you. So PSI, let me see if I have them. No, I don't, so. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's do another figure here. Access. Five point nine. So what's going to happen over here? It's going to be a jump to the now a prime to 497.69. Did somebody check this value? Double check this value? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so here, this is not part of the problem, but just to show that what that, so let's say that, okay, so this is A1, this is what is known as the flange, no? All right, so we have here all the values. I 
an approximation for the shear in the flange could have been what? That, what did we say before? Do you remember we said we could have used instead of the calculated, we could do some type of average, no? The what? Oh, sorry. Is that good? So in this case, it's going to be reversed to what we said before. So what, what could you use for V? Okay, but if you use 12K, so if you use 12K, which is fine, which is what I will use, but then if you use 12K, then you're assuming what? That all the shear force is being resisted by what? By the area A1, no? Does that make sense? No, so you know some of the force is gonna be resisted by A1, some of the force is gonna be resisted by A2, no? Okay, but let's say you wanna do your design, so, if you do your design on average throughout the whole cross section, what could be an average for this? You could take the 12,000. Yeah, I'm not saying no, but what will you use for A? All right, you will use A1 plus A2 will be some type of average, no? So if you do that, let's see what will you get. I don't know what will you get here, but it would be 10, 10 to the three divided by, what do we have over here, BF? times T sub F plus HW times TW. So what would that give you? 200 PSI? Okay, so. 200 PSI. So you see already, this is again, just to show you like, without even doing the one on the other one, what will be already the factor? A lot more than 50%, no? Yeah, so be careful with doing this approximation. I mean, it is done, but for example, what would have been a better approximation if you want to be conservative? Instead of taking A1 plus A2, you could have taken A1, no? In that case, the average should be what? Should be higher, no? Okay, but at least your design would be over-designed a little bit. And you don't have to do all these calculations. Does that kind of make sense or not? Because in real life, your initial design, you don't go and use BQ over IT. You're going to say what? I'm going to assume that it, it, any one of these members needs to be able to sustain the whole shear force, no? You do your design. If you don't have a constraint in weight or in size, you might say, you know what? Let it go, no? If it's too heavy and you want to save some weight, then what can you do? You can go into a more detailed analysis. All right, that was important to understand about structures that your initial design, it just needs to be safe. Okay, then you need to go more deeper if you wanna make it better, not to save weight and so on. That's why it's, uh, I mean, really the best stress engineers will be in which field? Which field has a more weight constraint? Okay, do you see a civil engineer is very worried about the weight? No, okay. If the bridge weights two tons or 25 tons, it's not, it's not a big deal, no? It's just more expensive or material. If an aircraft weighs 25 tons instead of whatever, five tons, is that a big deal? It's a big deal. So that's why if you were aerospace, a lot of attention is paid to stress analysis because whatever, in any place you can save weight, that's what you're gonna do. 
Okay. All right. So now let's do the. Okay. Before doing the next thing, let's stop over here since I'm thinking about it. We're going to do like little stuff. So next. Let's find really how much of the shear force B is resisted by A sub one. Okay, so that's that. More complicated, okay? I don't know if I would ask you this in an exam or not. I don't think so. Um, it's not important, but. All right, so, but let's see what would that be. So basically, let's just redo the figure. Always figures. But this time, instead of putting values, we're going to leave some variables. We have this, we have this. We have our natural axis, but this time, instead of integrating the whole area, I'm just going to consider one element of area here. I'm going to derive the expression. So we know we're going to have to calculate this will be the y z. Let me do maybe different color. We know this is. Y bar, this is EDF, this is EDF. Let's see if I can do it here. Okay, so now this is the difficult part. We're going to start from here, okay? This is our starting point. All right, so let's see. What would be the area of this element, the, the green one? Let's start by the easy term. What would be the width? This or that, no? What would be the height? Start will be what y bar no see let's call here that distance over here y sub one so what would be the area that that uh, the height of that area would be y bar minus y sub one no So this will be the area. Uh, now, what be the what be the y zigly over here? So now this needs to be the distance from the natural axis. So what would that be? Y sub one plus half of this, no? What would be half of this? Okay, so plus y bar minus y1 over two, correct. Okay, so if you do the calculations for this, Fine, I think you give me that value before. This gives you 
65.34 minus six y one squared. Oh, so it's not that bad we're doing this because it's kind of a re-derivation. Okay, so why is this here? Why is this here elliptic or quadratic? Because this is function of square, no? Yeah, it's not linear. So you see, we can indirectly, we cannot do the derivation. Okay, so since we have this, I'm gonna do this in detail. So we do the same thing we have done, really. Okay, so let's put it right here. So the shear force, so the shear, that would be two ways to do it. It's not a bad thing to do that way. I'm happy. So the shear in the flange, will be equal to what? So A1 will be equal to tau sub A, as we used before, will be V, um, Q sub A divided by IT. So again, let me go back to this one since we use the notation. This will really be Q sub A. We only did for this area, no? So we do this, this will be equal to what? <laughs> B over I. What should be here the thickness? The W of the stuff we just derived. 65.34 minus six Y one square. Okay, so okay, I wasn't planning doing this, but at the end, I'm pretty happy we're doing it. So it should be equal to what? Should be equal to 12,000 divided by, what was I? 390.6 times BF was 12 times 65.34 minus six by one square, perfect. So let's see. Let's see if this works. Okay, what would be here? Y1. Is that the figure? What would it be? Just finding some space here, but what would be Y1? Okay, Y bar minus, what was the thickness? E flange, no? So this gives you what? What was Y bar? So 3.3 .3 minus T flanges. Three, okay, so that means at y1 equal to 0 0.3, this if we did correct, what value should we get? 
should get 168.89, no? Yeah, if what we did is correct. So if you replace now, so let's say Y1 or Y1 equal to 0 0.3, If you substitute over here, can you check? I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be correct, but yeah. it does. Yeah. Okay. So we should get 165.89 PSI. Okay, but why did we do all this stuff? I wasn't planning doing this, but since it was over there, and so our real goal was to do what? So what is the real shear force resisted by the flange and one. Okay, so we know that shear force, no, shear stress is equal to shear force by area. So that means that we can find P will be equal to what? Tau times the area, no? Let me here, E equal L times the area. So it's equal to what? 12, 10 to the three, divided by 390.6 times 12. Oh, I need to put another bracket here outside, times 65.34 minus 6y1 squared. Where in here, I'm gonna do this very quick. Okay, so let's go over here. The area, I give it to you because of the time, would be equal to what? Would be equal to BF times BY1. Okay, whatever would be the height, no? So this is push of Y1. So now this case will have this times B sub F BY1. So if we integrate, I'll give you the results, but if we integrate, we're gonna have V on the flange, or say V would be equal to what? To the interval of 12, 10 to the three, B sub F divided by 390.6, 12, times 65.34 minus six y one square dy sub one. And this gives you, sorry for that for doing it quick, but just because of the time, but if you do this calculation, this will give you 3.82 
10 to the three pounds or V equal 3.82 kip. So I've done all this stuff. I don't know why I complicated the problem a lot, but basically to show what? Uh, what is my other pictures? What were our initial guesses for the value of the shear? We say was 200, no? If we took both of them. If we only took the area one, we should have been, so it's been 200. 200 times this area would be what? Can somebody do that? Seventy two hundred. So that would have been 7.2. So it would be twice the value of the real force carried by the by the plant, no? Okay. So all right. So that's it for today. But basically, does that shed some lights about shear? Okay.